Today, for the demo, I'm going to be making this star, it's actually a star earring. I'll be connecting air wires to it later. Uh, I thought in view of the 4th of July coming up, it seemed like an appropriate thing to do. I'm going to start by taking a sheet of white clay that I've run through the thick setting of the plast machine. And I've got a Kemper cutter, star-shaped Kemper cutter here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I'm going to cut out a number of star shapes. These will be the stars that form the stars in the blue background, the blue field. I recommend that you cut the white clay before you cut a hole in the blue clay, the stars. Uh, otherwise, you get the blue stars, light blue stars, when you go to finish off the uh, the cane. Now these stars are larger than I wanted and so I'm going to have to make a cane and reduce it in order to get the stars down to the size, my preferred size. So I'm going to punch out about five of these which is probably more than I need. And having punched those out, I need to then create the blue field and put the uh, punch a hole in it for the stars. The blue is ultramarine blue. I've run through the boss machine on the thick setting. I'm going to stack it up about three layers deep so I've got enough to make a nice cane out of. I don't need a very large cane, just enough to work with. And obviously I need to make sure I get the air bubbles out, which is why I'm pressing down along there as I go. Drive it up a little bit so that it looks nice. I tend to, when I punch through it, I tend to, if I've got overhang, miss the edges. And I don't want to do that because I could put a gap in there. Okay, that is solid. I'm going to take my star cutter again, position it here, cut down through the blue clay. There we go. All the way through, that should give me a nice shape. We'll punch the blue clay out of there. And I just want to make sure I've got it all the way through. Yes, it goes all the way through. Now I'm going to cut right across the horizontal part of the star. So the top of the horizontal uh, arms of the star. So if you can see this, I'll be cutting it right across here. That way, it'll be should be easy to put the white stars in there. And the easy way to do that is to open it up just a little bit, and then put these guys inside. For those that know me, I don't do canes. The reason I don't do canes is I don't do them well. Now I realize one argument is if I did more of them I would probably do them better, but it's not something I've ever really wanted to do that much of. Well, I have seen some people that did lovely canes, and I've done some, but uh, it's not part of my strength in working with polymer clay. And there I've got the stars in position. I'm going to press them a little bit to make sure I get them pressed together and any air bubbles out. And then reassemble the cane. Put the, basically putting the top back on. And that should give me a nice star pattern that I then need to reduce in order to get it down to the size I really want for my for the stars in my flag, in my earring. And I'm just pressing on all four sides pretty much at the same time, trying to make sure I get it uniformly reduced. I don't want it to start distort the shape of the star too much. 
And as you, anyone who has worked with canes much knows, it is easy to in, introduce a lot of distortion. So I am trying to keep that to a minimum as I'm doing this. Well, at the same time, I'm trying to pay attention to how much is being reduced. I'm trying to get them to about eh, maybe half the size of what they were. Uh, and so that means this thing's going to end up three to four times longer than what it really used to be. Uh, trying to maintain the, the volume. Okay, let's see. What am I gonna, I've got some blocks of wood here that I often use to for my cane, clay work, and I'm trying to get them in there to make sure I get things nice and straight. And uniform, keep the thickness and the shape. I'm going to cut off the end of this and see if I've got anything resembling a star inside of that. Oh, good. With a little bit of work, I can get a nice star shape out of that, and it's about the right size, the size of what I'm looking for. So I'm going to slice for the other side and see how that looks. Uh, it's a little distorted on that end. A little bit of work and I can probably get it back to a nice star shape. You can see there is some distortion there. Uh, this side looks fairly good. So I'm going to set that aside to let it rest for just a few minutes while I make the rest of the earring. Well, for the rest of the earring I need red and white stripes, uh, which is quite easy to do. Uh, here I've got a piece of red pomegranate. And since I want to make sure my stripes have got a uniform thickness to them, I'm going to take this balsa stick and put it on the table, put it on the red pomegranate, and cut through there. And now I've got a nice straight edge to work with. But this guy up against it. I want these to be about 3 16 of an inch thick. So I've got this piece of wood, balsa wood I got from Hobby Lobby, the craft store, mm -hmm. and I can put it, see if I can use this stick up against there, put the balsa wood up against it, kind of hold it in place with my fingertips, because it does once in a while tend to try to move, and just Slice through this red clay. Peel that one off, put it aside, put this guy up against it, and do it again. You see, it goes fairly quickly, and it gives me some very nice uniform cuts, uniform wide stripes, which is exactly what I'm looking for. No, I'm not gonna. Now I actually want seven red stripes and six white, which is exactly what the American flag has on it. It has 13 stripes, seven are red and six are white. And it won't take me too long to, to make these cuts. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press forward with what I'm doing. And we will, should get through this. Whoops, that didn't feel right. That's yeah, better. And every once in a while they mess up. And, uh, it's not too bad. Continue this. Four, five, that's six of them. One more, and we will have the red stripes. Red stripe there. Okay. That will give me 
the red stripes I need. Set that aside. I'm going to take the sheet of white. Again, I've got to clean my surface here, otherwise I'm going to get red color or something into my white clay, which is not going to be a pleasing result. This thing was already cut once, so I uh, just need to make sure I get it straight. And then having that down there and straight, I can once more cut right along the edge. Make sure I get that cut straight. Keep going through those. Let me cut one more and then I will show the assembly portion of this. Okay. And once you've got all of that cut, you don't need to be watching me do that. What I'm going to do is start taking the, these guys, again, try to make sure when I put them on the tile that they are, first and down is straight, because I don't really, I hadn't thought about putting a, putting a wavy flag down, but I don't think I'll try that just yet. Kind of nudge them together. Two sticks down there and use that to nudge everything together a little bit. Just keep keep going like this. Eventually I will have everything and have a nice nice uh, flag shape there flag stripes. And now I'm going to do the video trick of moving this whole thing off camera. And then when I bring it back on camera, you find that the entire thing is assembled and I've trimmed off this edge so it's nice and square. Now I wanted a square edge on that side so that I can uh, use it as a, as a reference point when I put the blue field in there. I'll come back to that in just a minute, but right now I need to make some slices in my cane, which should have set a little bit in this period of time. And I need to slice off, uh, and a little thicker than the setting on the plasma machine, so I can make sure I've got slices that are going to do what I want. Make sure I've got, okay, that one's a good star. Some of these don't always come out the way I expect them to, which is surprising. But if I can get three good stars out of this cane, I will have what I want. And so far I've got two good stars out of this cane. That's not good. Uh, I wonder if I can adjust this guy a little bit. He's a little fat on one side. And if I slim him down, if he will, because I've got a little bit of a boo-boo on the bottom of that star. If I can clean that up, uh, Well, I'm going to have to go with that because that star I cannot use. And that star I can. That one's a good star. So the stars need to have a point that goes up. There it is. Kind of up. 
adjust it a little bit so this is closer to an up point on that. Take this guy and nudge him around just enough so that he's got an up point. I'm not sure where this guy is going to have his up point. Ah, okay. So I'm going to put this guy in here because I know what's going to happen to him. I'm going to put this guy over there. Now I need a little bit, I need to bring them a little closer together. Having done this a few times, I've got an idea what the spacing on, on these really is going to end up looking like. So I need to trim them up so my stars are a little closer together. That should work. I'm going to trim the bottom of this guy just a hair. Bring him in and down. Now that I need some clay to fill in the the corner there, I'll take some blue, ultramarine blue, and run it to the pasta machine and see how that's going to come out. Fill in that corner. Okay. Let's get that corner filled in. And as I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking I've got the good side as are those guys. I'm going to have to trim this guy just a little bit to get him to where I want him to be. So I'm going to flip him over and assemble him on the back side. So that when I trim him up a little bit, I may get down to a slightly better image of the star. Okay. We'll put that guy back together. I need some clay on the edges here. So we'll put that guy over there. I'm on another piece of clay for the plus machine. I'm going to give myself a straight edge to work with here. And trim it there. Now I'm going to trim that off just because those stars, my slices are a little thick. And for those of you who know me, you know that my slices always end up being a little thick. The good news is that this is the back side, so I'm not, it's not a big concern. Okay. Now what I want to do is to take a sheet of deli paper and smooth down all my seams so that I can hide them. I kind of get that taken care of there. Okay. And then we'll straighten that out. Flip him over. Work on these the seams on this side. Just again trying to get them all nice and smooth. Hide the seams. Fun part's coming up because I've got to somehow get this blue field into that cane or into the stripes. Okay, that's trimmed up. Now the this is the cutter I'm going to use to make the cut on the for the earring, and I want it. What I want is for the blue field to come down to about this point here. Uh, so it's, it's going to come from here down to about here. And I want it to come off this point. Now for those of you that pay attention to the American flag, the blue field starts on a red stripe and goes down to the seventh stripe. So it ends at the base of another red stripe. So 
So the blue field is going to come in on this stripe right here. It's going to finish at the base of this stripe right here. And it needs to come down. So from about, from a point about here is where it needs to start. So I'm going to cut down from there, eyeball something that's going to be vertical. Okay. And come in there. And that should give me the spot for my blue field to fit into. I want it to fit in this way. Okay, I've got that in there. And once more, I'm going to lay down my deli sheet and run over the entire thing with my fingers to smooth it down and get it into position and make sure that all my seams are taken care of. I know it doesn't look like much of a blue field right now, but when I make the cut, uh, you'll see why I only three stars are really all I need. Okay. Got that taken care of. I've got a little bit of a spot right there. Probably ought to try and fill it in with just a little touch of clay. Because I maybe I'd create a divot when I try to work with it. Fill in that divot there. may not be an issue, but uh, if I take care of it now, it definitely won't be an issue. I imagine it's going to be pretty close to where the star cuts, but now I've got that nice and smooth. Now at this point, I need to position this guy, and this is just sit here, you look down over the top of it, make sure I've got the point where I want it and this red stripe and the blue field in right here. And once I've got it positioned and square with respect to the stripes, I'm going to press down, cut through that whole thing. Now because I have trouble with these cutting through them, I'm going to hold this down and peel the clay away from it. At least on most of, most of the sides. I do that so that I make sure I get a good clean cut. Now because I'm going to make a second star, I am not going to, well actually I could, I can come in under here, hold this guy down and then lift that up. Okay, and that will, I can use that, I can reassemble that and put it back together and have what I need for another earring. Now at this point I can take this guy and pop him into the oven. I'm just going to take two of them and pop them into the oven and bake them. And do that off camera. When it, and when they are when they are baked, it will come out looking like this. And I can then uh, now I need to put an ear wire in there or an ear ring or actually an ear wire in there using a jump ring. 
this is a pin vise. It's just a little thing to grip. Go bits. I pick up any hardware store, I think. I think that's where I got this one. And I've picked up a small uh, Dremel drill bit. And I want to drill a hole that's uh, maybe an eighth of an inch or so down from the top of this. Fortunately, with polymer clay, so I'm down just a little bit below the red stripe, which means I'm probably about three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch down. With polymer clay, uh, even baked it, drills fairly easily. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but as I am even, I'm not putting any pressure on this, or not putting a lot of pressure, uh, but I'm getting, it's, I can feel it going through, I can see cuttings coming off the star, it feels like it's all the way through, if it's not, I can put my finger behind it and put a little more pressure there and continue drilling, and there it comes through. Now, it's been my experience when I do this that it helps to run the drill bit through once or twice just to kind of clean the hole out, get the edges nice and clean, and then it is ready for a jump ring. Oh. So that is how I make these earrings. Hope you enjoyed it.